Hello, and welcome back to Sue Online. Today, we have candidate John Duke from Ward 2. Hello, John. Hi, Mike. Uh, is this your first uh, attempt at uh, politics? It is. Okay. Uh, would you like to tell the people something about yourself? Sure. Um, I am a father of three. I have twin girls that are six and a young daughter who's two. I'm happily married to my wife, Laura, who works for Canada Post. Um, my parents are in town. My grandmother is still in town. Uh, I'm a fifth generation, at least, resident of the Sioux. That was as far back as I could trace it. Um, I am a business owner. I'm also a realtor with Exit Realty. I live in War II. Um, the area I live in now, I, I'm on the corner of Warren and Summit, and that's somewhere that, um, since I was fairly young, I had always wanted to be in the Summit area. Um, I love the character homes up there. Uh, my house was built in 1894. Uh, it used to be the farmhouse for that side of the street. And then Mr. Camaletti's house across the street was the farmhouse for that side of the street. So there's just so much history. And uh, I really love War II and, and the homes and uh, the people there. Why did you decide to run in this election? I, I think that there's quite a disconnect between City Hall and the people of Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, and, and I seem to hear a lot as I've been going to the doors. I've, I've been trying to hit doors uh, every night that I can. Um, I'm out all day on the weekends. My wife complains about being a single mom. <laughs> but she's pretty supportive, I mean, for the most part. Um, I, I think that we need some change. Uh, we need, uh, I don't want to say change just for the sake of change, but we need a change where we're going to have some progressive thinking. Um, we're going to throw some stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Um, council needs to take some chances, uh, not worry about maybe striking out and stuff not working. I think that people will appreciate just uh, taking a chance and seeing if we get some new industry here, uh, drive some, some people back to the Sioux. Um, I, I heard one of my uh, co-constituents say um, that there's going to be a study put out um, to ask the people of Sault Ste. Marie what they want. It was mentioned that that hasn't been done in a long time. I think that it's, it's kind of funny that now we're talking about asking the people of Sault Ste. Marie what they want a week before the election. Um, that has been part of my platform all along, is accountability and accessibility at City Hall. I think that we really need to see what the people want. Um, I've heard at the doors some great ideas. People of the Sioux have great, great ideas. We're, we're intelligent, we're well spoken, we have a great knowledge base to draw from, and I don't think that we do enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really want to push that. I really want um, to just, just consult with the people of the city, with, with all the technology we have now, Twitter, Facebook, uh, email. The city website would be a great place for polls, like uh, some of the websites do now. Mm -hmm. um, we need to start using that technology. This brings me to the downtown. Yes. Uh, what can we do in, in the downtown to attract more businesses, keep the ones that are there already open yeah. and attract tourists and our own Suites to the area. I think there's a lot that can be done. Um, we need to look at, and I mentioned at the debate, um, taxes. I had looked at purchasing a building on March Street that's for sale currently. Um, I, I did my due diligence and I saw that the taxes were $6,900 a year. That's not including any improvements that I would done. Uh, as you know, the road's being torn up, so I'm sure there's going to be a levy there. Um, phases in over five or ten years. So it, for me to look at my mortgage, my taxes, my utilities, I was close to three grand, if not more, um, just every month without wages, without operating business. So to me, to, to think that I'm going to pay $7,000 a year in property taxes is just a little hard to stomach. Mm -hmm. um, there's over 200,000 square feet of vacant space downtown. Why? You know, because the property taxes are so high. So owners have to charge their tenants so much rent. It's hard to fill the space when people can't afford to pay their rent. So they're going to work from their homes. Lots of accountants, lots of maybe hairdressers, uh, people that work from their home currently, I'm sure they'd love to have an office to get away from the kids or to go and really focus on their work. Um, but it's very difficult when you're paying $1,000, $1,500 a month for rent. Yeah, uh, I've asked this question to uh, another candidate. Uh, how about the arts? Like, you go to Stratford, yeah. and there's musicians, artists, mm -hmm. basically through the summer. Yeah. But they're there along the, 
downtown street all the time. And there's tourists, tons of tourists yeah. uh, go down there and while they're watching uh, the artists and, and the musicians, other uh, their family, the rest of their families are inside the stores shopping. Of course. Uh, what do you think about that? I think we need to do more stuff like that. Um, my brother loves going to the festival in Stratford. Uh, he does it, I'd say, every other year. Um, North Bay with Summer in the Park. They have a great festival in North Bay. I've been quite a few times. There's music. They have it right on the water. They, they cordon it off. There's music. There's activities. Um, there's a million dollar hole in one this year. Um, there, there's just so many opportunities that we have here. We need to maybe look to other cities and see, hey, what are you doing? What's working for you? Um, I think personally, when we shut down, I've talked to business owners, when we shut down portions of Queen Street for, be it Busker Fest or the little festival that went on downtown this year, um, for the Greyhounds event, I was there this year for the first home, the home opener, um, those businesses see such a boom in their business because people don't just go and sit on the street. They're going to walk, they're, it, you know, you do that and it increases foot traffic. Mm -hmm. Something that's vitally important to a downtown core is foot traffic. Um, I spoke to it at council, but there's been a, um, a study done by the Brookings Institute that said people will walk 1,500 feet before they'll look for another means of transportation. It, it's, it's been studied. So if we can engage someone here, get them to walk 1,000 feet, engage them there, then that 1,500 feet starts over. So it's not just 1,500 feet total. We can keep repeating. I don't know if maybe the downtown core is too big right now, from Church Street all the way over to Gore. It's quite a big area to, to, try to, to try to bring back with just economic development. Um, I think we need to tighten it up a little bit. We might not have the population to support such a large downtown, um, but that's one way that we could do it, is by increasing foot traffic. Um, it might not be a popular opinion, but I, I'd like to look at making Queen Street a two-way street again. Um, that's been shown to slow traffic, which in turn increases the opportunity to see, hey, there's a store, oh, there's a store I might like if you're sitting at a light. Um, it makes pedestrians feel safer to know that traffic is two ways. Um, there's, there's been lots of studies done on it, and I think that that's something that we might want to look at uh, mm -hmm. to increase our downtown area and bring downtown back. One of the biggest issues this city has is the water quality. Um, why do you think the PUC is having so much difficulty in rectifying the problem? And what do you think that they can do to rectify the problem? And continuing on, how can the city pressure them to work on it so that it can get done yesterday? Right. I, th I think it's taken far too long for this issue to be resolved. It, it started happening in early 2011. We're now going into 2015, and there's still... Yeah, there's, a, there's an end in sight. PUC has told me. I met with Dominic Perella, the CEO of PUC, uh, about two weeks ago. And he said that they're hoping that by the end of the year, the stage one will have remedied the issue. If not, they're going to move into stage two, which is a UV filtration. and It's, it's a big to-do, um, very technical. But um, it, they're hoping that it's, it's resolved by the end of this year. If it's not, then their plan is to do a, a second survey in November of 2015. I spoke to that at council as well. I think that that's far too long. Why wait a full year to see if the water is better? Uh, Mr. Perala informed me that they're still receiving about three um, complaints a day from customers, whether it's taste, odor, or brown water. That's a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. three a day is, you know, 13, 1400 a year. That's a lot. Um, I think it's taken far too long, and I, and I think it's just a lack of accountability. Um, it's easy to just sit back and say, well, it'll figure itself out if nobody's really holding you to the fire and saying, get it done, get it done. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen, that hasn't happened. Um, council and the mayor's office need to be held accountable for what's happened. Um, if they don't oversee the PUC, who does? What do you think about the suggestion that's been made to replace the current PUC with another organization, another company? It's, you know, that's a tough one. Um, the oversight by the city should mitigate any issues that arise. People need to feel confident in their water. Um, I don't know that if it's a private entity 
distributing and being responsible for the water that people would be as confident in the city. I know that now confidence is definitely shaken uh, and rightfully so. Things have been going on for so long that people are just looking for answers and they're looking for somewhere to turn. Who do we turn to? Who do we trust to get this resolved? And that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. um, I, my worry personally is that if a private entity takes it over, it's a monopoly, right? So who is there to hold them to the fire? In your opening statement at the Ward 2 debate, you mentioned crime. Uh, what can the city do in partnership with the police services uh, to decrease the rate, especially domestic violence? I think council needs to work very diligently with the police services board. Um, I think we need to really work in partnership with them and see what they need. We need to ask the guys that are out on the front lines, ask the constables that are at the doors. Um, there's, there's two domestics a day in the city. Um, ask them what they need. What can we provide you to help you do your job better? Um, whether it's education, courses that the guys go on. Um, we don't need to just educate the police services. I think they do a great job. Um, it's, a, it's a really tough thing to deal with domestic violence. There's a lot of recidivism. It's a lot of the same people. Um, it's not just usually an isolated incident. It usually happens, 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 and then it's reported. And then it happens again if, if people stay in. We need to really educate the public and we need to make people aware of, of the opportunities that are out there for them for support. There are a lot of great organizations that will support people that are victims of domestic violence. And it's, they're scared. They're scared to come forward. They're afraid of what will happen if, if for instance, their boyfriend or their husband assaults them and charges aren't brought forward. Well, what's going to happen if you have to go back to home with that person? Or if you live with someone and domestic charges are brought forward, um, domestic violence charges, where do you go? And that's, that's a worry for a lot of people. Well, I have my kids with this person. I have all my belongings. I have an apartment with this person. I have a house with this person. It's not just a matter of, of reporting it and then the, the issue goes away. It's, it's a lifelong issue that, that we really need to educate people about. Yeah, well, this is where the education of the victim comes in. Exactly. To uh, let them know where they can go, who they can talk to. Right. And the, the, they're assured that they're protected right. after the fact. Right. Whether it's Vickers, uh, the Sexual Assault Care Center, if that's what has happened, mm -hmm. Phoenix Rising, there's a lot of great organizations out there, and we just need to make people more aware of those organizations. Yeah, I've heard a lot of, a lot of uh, educational programs yes. in, in southern Ontario yes. for the police services and the victim. Maybe uh, this council can lobby the government or whoever is in charge or whoever does the educating to do it here. But then we'd have to increase the budget, which I have no problem with, especially in that area. Right. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, limiting the budget for the police services is, pardon the expression, stupid. Right. Uh, what do you think? I think that it, the police aren't just there to stop crime. Um, they don't just they don't just stop crime. They help prevent crime. Um, they they educate people. Um, you know, police. It's it's community policing. It's not it's not the police force anymore. It's the Sault Ste. Marie Police Service. They're there to help the public, to educate the public, um, to be just a, a safe face and, and be someone that people can turn to, and to limit their budget really really hamstrings that. Um, we need more police, if anything else. Um, there's the four divisions in town, um, and then there's radar cars, and there's the sergeant, and there's the staff sergeant, and there's inspectors. Um, it's it's not just it's not just the people you see on the front lines. And people say all the time, "Well, where's a police officer when you need one? Where's a police officer? Well, this happened, and you know it took the cops an hour to get here." Well, they're not doing nothing. They're at other calls. Domestics take time. There, there's a lot of, of paperwork involved. We need more police presence in this city, if anything, not less. That's, that's a given. You also mentioned the EDC. Uh, from its inception, we've spent f approximately $45 million uh, 
uh, do you think that we have received a good return for our money? I think so. Um, personally, I I own my own business. I was helped by the ADC. Um, I I've met a lot of people, a lot of young entrepreneurs um, at chamber events, at Strive events, um, just down the community that have been helped by the EDC. If you're a, a young uh, sole proprietor, where do you turn, right? There's, there's, there's a lack of a support system if we take the EDC away. I mean, we don't all have uh, an office of 50 people that we work in where if something comes across our desk, we look at it and we can say, hey, if I don't know the answer to this, I'm going to go to my boss. If he doesn't know, I'm going to go to his boss. Um, the EDC is really there to support people. I think that $45 million is is a great number. Um, it's, I don't think it's outrageous. I don't think it's um, too high by any means. Um, the EDC really works hard for the, the small business and, and the medium and large size business in the Sioux, um, but they are a, a big uh, proponent of entrepreneurship. And uh, I, I think they do a great job mm -hmm. helping move this city forward. And I think, uh, I think they're extremely necessary, vital. Okay, well thank you for coming in. Uh, would you like to say something to the voters of uh, your ward? I would. As the election draws nearer, I would like to say first off that I'm doing my best to get to everyone's door. I have been out knocking on doors every day, all day on the weekend. As I mentioned, my wife uh, has often said that she's a single mom. Um, but my support system has been great. I wouldn't be able to speak with as many of you as I have without them. Um, I'd like to thank them for that first and foremost. I would also like to say that if I haven't come to your door yet, trust me, I will do my best to get there. If you would like to speak with me, I can be reached at 705-206-3855 on my cell phone at any time. Um, I actually received a phone call about 10.30 last night, which uh, I'm okay with. Um, I can be reached at email. I can be reached on my website, johnduke.ca, uh, Facebook, Twitter. I'm, I'm very accessible and that's something that I believe the council needs to do is be accessible to the people of Sault Ste. Marie. I think that we need to be accountable for what's gone on at council and we need to continue to work hard to move this city in the right direction, increase our population and get Sault Ste. Marie where it should be. Thank you. We've been talking to John Duke, a candidate for Ward 2. This is Mike Crusoe for Sioux Online. Thank you.